So it just reminded us that Jesus, he's still mighty to save. Amen. Right. Amen. Mighty to save. He's drinking on the job. We gotta pray for him. <laughs> Keep it. Keep, keep, keep. Everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. Kindness of salvation, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save.
We give her praise. We give you glory. We think of her being so good to us, so faithful, so mighty, so gracious. Lord, just bless your people this morning, each and every one, whatever the need may be. Yes. May the power of the Holy Spirit minister to it. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Well, the Lord bless you. Glad to have you all with us this morning. Glad to be here, brother. Glad you made it. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord's been really good to us. I got to uh, advertise a little bit about Wednesday night. As we're doing a Bible study, and we've done something different with Wednesday night. We've created a new club on Wednesday night. It's called Eagle's Nest. Amen. And so uh, actually 20 people two weeks ago signed up for the Eagle's Nest. And actually 15 of them actually performed the Eagle's Nest. In order to get to the Eagle's Nest, you've got to memorize a verse once a week for five weeks. And you stand up here and you quote the verse. And then you tell why you picked that particular verse. Because it was short. Jesus saves. <laughs> no. And it really turned out very good. In fact, you could tell they'd been studying and into God's word, because how many know when you really get into God's word, God moves. Amen. Amen. God changes things. Yes. And we hadn't sung maybe but the first or second chorus on Wednesday night, and some people were getting up out of the pew and turning around and bending down and praying. Okay. Without a service. Can you imagine that? They weren't following the bulletin. <laughs> Goodness gracious. And so we just broke into the middle of the service and before we even did the lesson, we had an altar call and we had five or six guys come forward to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So if you'd like to be a member of the Eagle's Nest, pick a new verse, not something you already know, and show up on Wednesday night. And you too can soar with the Eagles. Because I am convinced that all these guys that we help and all these rehabs that come to us, what a privilege God has given us to be able to minister and affect them. And their minds can be affected by the word of God. Amen. And you know what? So can yours. That's right. God can wash your mind. He can even change your mind about some right. things. So we're all about God's word. You're going to hear more about that later. But we really want to encourage you. If you can, 6.30 on Wednesday night, you show up the eagle's nest. How many think you can handle one verse a week? I mean, that's pretty small. Yeah. Even Ralph did it. <laughs> hey, that's quite a testimony, though. We tease Ralph a lot, but that's a testimony. He has his own challenges with that. And God blesses him, and he snug out. You know what he had done, though? He cheated a little bit because he, <laughs> he, he learned too. Yeah. And he told, they told me when he was leaving Wednesday night, he said, I've already learned the second one. <laughs> So, so that's good. But that's what happens when you get into God's Word. That's right. One, there's never enough. They talk about potato chips, but you can't eat just one. If you're really <laughs> hungry for God's Word, you get into it. One's never enough. Amen. Amen. That's right. So we encourage you again to come on Wednesday nights. The Lord has really been good to us. We've got a lot of people with special prayer that we want to mention. Norma, of course, our loved one. Norma, and we've had a special friend that had a, a special prayer request in the morning. We wanted to pray with him also. And uh, who else was that, Angel? Gilbert. Oh yeah, we have a special family friend also that passed away. Actually, they found him in the parking lot at Kaiser Hospital uh, in his car, already passed. And uh, so we want to remember that whole family in prayer. Okay. But God's good, amen? Amen. And he's the one that's in charge. So. That's right. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. we got a host of folks around us that are sick. Some are even on hospice. And where's Lonnie sitting? He's up here. Lonnie, stand up. Let's give God applause. See, Lonnie is so bullheaded. He's just decided that, that uh, he's going to come serve the Lord with or without cancer. Amen. And so... Uh, He's just doing what he can while he can. That's and right. That, and God's going to, I think, reach and bless him and his lovely, lovely wife back here with us. So we just want to praise the Lord and support them and love them. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. All right. 
Father, again, we just love you. We are thrilled at your goodness, thrilled at your graciousness, your faithfulness. Lord, your word is truth. Teach us your truth this morning. Teach you and everyone, Lord. Just draw us closer to you. Put a hunger and appetite in everybody's heart and mind for more of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Ralph has a couple words of wisdom for us this morning. I gotta take off my glasses. Now, now, I, now I can really see. <laughs> oh, he's brought a Bible this oh, time. Yeah. Look out. Uh oh, watch out now. <laughs> okay, this is uh, Hebrews uh, 13, 5, 6. Oh, I'm sorry. And it says. Keep your life free from the love of money and be comfort with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So we can confidence saying, the Lord is my helper. I will fear nothing. Amen. What can man do to me? Amen. And that's a God that we Amen. worship and it's in our heart. Yes. I mean, just think of it. Everybody's a Christian here, I hope. Because if God's in you, you've got all the power in the world. He's that's the right. one that created Amen. everything. That's Amen. Right. Amen. So, you know, it's just a great feeling. And I'm going to tell you something. I went to the doctor to find out I had that cancer. And the doctor says, I got some good news for you. I said, what is it? He says, you don't have cancer, you're cancer free. Okay. And, you know, and you, know, I, you know what I told him? I said, man, I'm so happy I can give you a kiss. He says, oh, I'm out of here now. <laughs> I really didn't want to kiss him. <laughs> okay, let's say a prayer for you. Okay, thank you, Lord, for everything you give us, Lord. And just thank you for teaching me your word, Lord, because... I notice when I'm in your word at house, I'm studying and studying just to read that little verse I'm studying. And I don't have time to think that stinking thinking. And yes. the pastor was right in that area. And I just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you don't know, what you just heard was a miracle. Amen. Yeah. 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 Ralph couldn't read. Alexia. And other issues hadn't been able to read. Now he's working hard to learn the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So what you heard was a miracle just that's then. How I, Pastor, yeah. that's how I learned how to read, was through the Word of God. Amen. I, was, I, I, couldn't know, I didn't know how to read that well. I, I still have problems, but when I read the Word of God, He shows me and points it out to me. Amen. 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 Yeah. God's amazing, isn't it? Well, praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. The group has a special for us. Or somebody has a special for us. We have a duet. How's that? A duet. All right. We're just going to do it. Okay. <laughs> you may ask me how I know. My Lord is real. You may doubt the things I say and doubt the way I feel. But I know He's real today. He'll always be. I can feel His hand and that's enough for me I will never walk alone He holds my hand He will guide each step I take and if I fall I know He'll understand till the I 
Basically, is sick. China is sick. Height. So, height. I'm sorry. Sorry, other. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, but she is ill now, also, and uh, has been diagnosed with some scary stuff. So we remember that whole family in prayer, along with their children, who has numerous problems. Okay. So let's just take them to prayer. Father, again, we just have some loved ones out there, Lord. Travis Height and China and their whole family, Lord. We just ask you to minister to them through the power and through your grace and your mercy. Just touch each and every one of them. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I'm excited to you talk to you about the scripture this morning. And the kids are on their way, I think. I want to share prayer Yes. Before. Okay, and Jim is doing great. Sherman? Okay, so like, uh, thank you all for being on the prayer chain. Those who are on the prayer chain, if you're not on the prayer chain and you'd like to be, please talk to me after service. I'll be in the room back, the children's room back there. We are seeing tremendous power in Christ. And God yeah. is faithful in answering prayers. And Jim is doing great. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, you know, Margaret, she went home after losing her husband, my son, um, we thought she was going home to say goodbye to her dad. And uh, they waited till she got there because they just had news that morning. And they, she got there yesterday. And they, it's, it's a miracle. Okay, he was on the intubator for over three weeks. They expected him not to make it. And they took him off. And he couldn't talk because, you know, of course, he had a throat, uh, tube down his throat for three and a half weeks. But he was, he was alert and he was up and he was trying to answer the best he could. And today he's talking and yes. he's breathing on his own and God is so faithful. In Jesus' name, thank you for your prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give those kids a hand when they're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lord bless it. Well, if you got a Bible, you can turn it, open it up. We're going to be all over the place. The scriptures are uh, in the bulletin for you to help keep up. And we're going to give you some more besides that. So you might get out your pencil and piece of paper. Because we believe about studying God's word in this church. Okay? Yeah. So I'll try to slow down so you can write it all down. But uh, if you need notes afterward, just let me know. And we'll take care of it. I want to talk to you about something in the middle of this crooked and perverse world of ours. I want to talk to you something that's absolutely factual. How many of you have ever wondered a quick answer so you've gone to Google? Oh, yeah. Or Bing or whatever. Okay, some other website. Now, how many times have you found them wrong? <laughs> well, I want to talk to you something in the middle of all of this world, in spite of whatever you may be going to. I'm going to show you a 
reference, I'm going to give you a reference this morning, that has never been wrong, that's not going to be wrong, that it is strong, it is faithful, it is true, it is dependable, and you can count on it, and it is capable of even changing your mind. It is a book that you can believe in, and it's a book that is full of truth, it's a book that you can depend on, it's a book that's full of life, and love, and comfort, and support, and even instruction. How many of you have ever needed some instruction on occasion? Oh, yeah. See, this book's got it all, and it never changes. Amen. It never changes. So the big question boils down to, can you handle the truth? <laughs> That's a line right out of a big movie. Can you handle the truth? In fact, they say you can't handle the truth. You know, that's why a lot of people don't come to church, because you don't want to handle the truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are y'all all listening? Oh, yeah. Because the Bible can change your mind. It can tell you where you're at. And the more you know, if you really believed the Bible, you wouldn't miss an opportunity to be together studying God's Word. What's the Bible full of? The Word. Instruction. Jesus prayed for you. Amen. Jesus prayed for me. Jesus prayed for his disciples. And he's talking to God in John 17, 17. And he tells God, he asks God, he says, God, sanctify them by your Word. Your Word is truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free. How many like to really be free? Amen. How many really want to be victorious? Amen. Then quit caving into your flesh <laughs> and get into the worlds. Get into the word. Welcome to the eagle's nest. How many like to soar like an eagle? Amen. Then get into the word. Get into the world. It can change. The atmosphere, it can change your mind. Wow. Can you handle the truth? Then the next question would be, do you really want the truth? And if you do, what are you willing to get to? What are you willing to pay to get to the truth? How much work are you willing to do to get to the truth? Whatever. If it was gold, how much digging would you be willing to dig? Until you find it. Well, it's much more precious than silver or gold. Yeah. Amen. It is truth. It is the truth of God. Amen. It's the truth about life. It's the truth about relationships. It's the truth about how to live. So if you really believe the Bible, why wouldn't you be into it? Oh, because you're still in the flesh and you have to deal with yourself, don't you? <laughs> Just like I do. Well, the, it's asked in Psalms 119, verse 9, it asks the question, is, can a young man cleanse his ways? Oh, yeah. That's the question. Can a young man cleanse his ways? Well, if you look at it critically, the answer would be no, a young man can't. Not by himself. No, not by himself. But I can do all things through Christ, Christ would strengthen me. Yeah, can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. See, so he's talking to God, the psalmist is. And with my whole heart, I have sought you. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? Oh. All thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and all thy strength. Oh, let me not wonder from your what? Commandments. Don't let me go astray. Remind me, the Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my ways. See if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the paths of righteousness. Your word, and here's the key. Ralph, this is why we're so positive, so strong on the word right now. I'm going to change the atmosphere of this place. Or God's going to if I can get you to follow me. Thy word have I hid in my heart. What does it mean to hide his word in your heart? You don't speak it for it. 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not, what? Sin. Sin against you. You see, I've realized I've got enough common sense to know if I will put you, if I will search you with all my heart, and if I am sincere, and I will put your word into my heart, into my emotions, into my various being, into the source of my being, if I will consume your word, then your word will change me. And I will not sin against you. How many would like to be in that place? Amen. And get into his word. Amen. Your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you. Oh Lord, what's that? What is that phrase? Blessed are you. Praise. I'm sorry? Praise. How about this half? What is that phrase? Praise. praise. Everybody say praise. praise. Worship. 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 Recognition. Acknowledgement. Acknowledge. Blessed are you, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to your word. Wow. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wonder from your commandments. Your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Not what I can just get away with. But teach me your commandments. Why? To be like Jesus. You see, the more of Jesus you put into yourself, the more you become like him. I'm going to say it again, Brother Wood, that's a great line. The more of his word you put into yourself, the more you will become like him. Amen. I said, the more of his word you will allow to become part of you, the more you will become like him. Amen. Woo. Wow. We used to sing this old song, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask, to be like him. How many would like to be like Jesus? Amen. Do you really want to be like Jesus? Oh, yeah. Do you really want to get? Then get into the word like never before. Whether you can make it on Wednesday night or not, doesn't matter. Get into the Word. And if nothing else, just challenge yourself. Do one verse, one new verse a week. And it'll change you. It'll change you. You know, and unlike so much a man's knowledge you know, some of the textbooks I read when I was a child, they have changed. How many of you had that experience? You read things now that didn't used to be true. They used to tell me that everything that went up had to come down. <laughs> you ever heard that? They said everything went up has to come down. Well, does it anymore? Not necessarily. You get it far enough and it never come down. Man's truth changes. Have you noticed any changes in yourself? How many looked in the mirror this morning? How many dared to look into the mirror? <laughs> Ralph looks in the sink, not in the mirror, and he wonders how much went down the drain. <laughs> We change, don't we? We change with the calendar. But God's word never changes. That's right. Amen. It is yea, yea, and nay, nay. Yeah. Psalms 119, 87 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Forever, your word is settled in heaven. Man, 
Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You've established the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For you are what all are your servants. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says this. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of God what? Stand forever. Everybody say stands forever. Stands forever. Stands forever. Wow. Matthew 24 to 35. Jesus says heaven and earth will pass away. But my word shall by no means pass away. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says, Having been born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Everybody say forever. Forever. It abides forever. God's word abides forever. It doesn't change with the seasons. It doesn't change with the word. Aren't you glad that the word of God's not moody? Amen. <laughs> yes. You ever met anybody that was moody? Yes. And sometimes you're afraid to ask them good morning because you're afraid of the answer. What would the answer might be? What's good about it? Well, I got up on the wrong side of the bed. God's word is not moody. It never changes. It is truth. Sanctify them, Father, with the truth. Make them holy. Make them pure. Make them more like me. Set them aside for service. That's what sanctification means. And you do that with your word, God, because your word is truth. So build a hunger. Put an appetite within them for your word like never before. Amen. That your word would change them. Because your word stays the same. It abides. It stands yes. forever. Ah. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower fades away. But the word of God endures forever. Everybody say forever. forever. I'm going to teach you a song right now. We're going to, you're going to be a choir, all right? I'm going to say a word, and I want you to say forever. All right? Nobody's going to do it. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you a word, and you're going to say forever. Everybody, see if you can do it on three. One, two, three. Forever. 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 One, two, three. Forever. Okay. God's word stands. Forever. God's word abides. Forever. God reigns for. Forever. Okay, now say forever. 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 And ever. And ever. How? Forever. Lee. Forever. Blue. Forever. Yeah. Forever. Now say hallelujah. Hallelujah. stands for ever. ever. His word abides for ever. ever. It does not change because it's everlasting. It lasts for ever. ever. You can depend on it. How long? Forever. Forever. Ever. And ever. And ever. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Said hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 His word stands. Forever. His word abides. His word lasts. His word endures. Amen. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Blessed art thou, O Lord, because you can change my mind Amen. with your word. Give me this good sense to understand that. Wow. And it does all of that. It's able to be so pure, so strong, so enduring, 
because it was written by God himself. See, that's our belief in the church. If you wondered what we believe in, we believe in the Bible as the inspired word of God. Amen. As the Holy Spirit moved upon chosen men of God and gave them the words to write that would last for ever and ever and ever. And ever. ever. Amen. When you leave this place today, if you got nothing else to tell your neighbor, you can tell them that the Word of God stands forever. The Word of God abides forever. The Word of God endures forever. 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 Wow. I've got a truth that never changes. I can build on it. I can depend on it. I can lean on it. I can learn on it. I can live through it. Because God wrote it. It wasn't written by man. It was penned by man. It was written by God. Amen. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, For all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Anybody ever need some instruction? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why a lot of people don't come to church. They don't want to be instructed. <laughs> they already know what they're doing wrong, and they don't want to stop. So, And that man, that the man of God, See, it's all of this is given to us. Look at God's grace and his mercy. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be what? Complete. And ladies too. Amen. May be complete. How many of you want to be complete in God? Oh, yeah, amen. That's what the word is written for, that you may be complete. But you need to get into the Word thoroughly equipped for every good works. Do your good works. Let men see your good works that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen? Amen. amen. But you get equipped through the Word. Yes, amen. Get equipped through the power of the Holy Spirit. Get into the Word. Second Peter 1.17 puts it this way, For prophecy never came by the will of man. Now, there's some new theologians, new theology that, that they could learn from the Bible if they get into the Word and get out of their own head. For the prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God spoke as they were what? Moved on by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. Then Jeremiah gives us an example. And he tells Jeremiah, God illustrates now through Jeremiah on how it was done. He tells Jeremiah, take a scroll of a book and write on it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel, against Judah, against all the nations. From this, from the day I spoke to you, from days of Joash, even to this day. You do what I tell you right now. See, that's what God did to men of God. They said, write these words. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. The Bible is called the bread of life. Jesus is called the bread of life. And yet there's people, the bread of life is so plentiful. How many think we got enough churches probably in town? I think there's 14 or 15 churches in this town. Wow. And most of them are good Bible Believing churches that I know. Okay, teaching churches. And yet we got people starving for lack of the bread of life. We got people dying for lack of the bread of life. And there's all this wonderful food swimming all around Lucerne Valley. And very few are eating it. They tell me that you can take a barracuda, a big old fish with a lot of big teeth, get up to 110 pounds 
and they're built like a torpedo, very fast. Yes. Ferocious hunters, yep, live feeders. They love little fishes. Mm -hmm. About anything they get in their mouth, they'll take <laughs> a much. piece of. Very aggressive predators. Mm -hmm. But you can take one and you can put him in an aquarium. And you can put a divider in the aquarium. And you'll put goldfish on one side, his favorite food. And you can put him on the other. And he will bang against that barrier trying to get to his food till he stops. And when he stops, you can take that barrier out of there and he'll starve to death, mm -hmm. swimming around his favorite food or his favorite food swimming all around him, even brushing up against him. But he's been conditioned that he can't have it. So he'll starve to death in a tank full of food. If you're listening online, I hope you are. This is one of the real problems with us in the world, even in church and out of church, is that we've been conditioned by the devil and the world that certain things, and sometimes even our own rituals, our own customs, we're taught that these things, some things of God are not for us. The devil says, you can't do that nowadays. You can't be successful. You can't live a Christian life. I'm here to tell you the devil's a liar yes. Yes. and he's a cheat yes. and he will try to condition you. He will try to persuade you. He will try to convince you that you can't feed on the word of God Amen. like they used to. God's word is available today. It has never changed and it's never been more available. God wants you to come and dine. The master calls. Yes. Come and dine. Come and feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. He tells us all right now, come and die. Come and chow down on the word of God. God's a good cook. Every commandment which I have commanded, which I have commanded you today, you must be careful to observe. See, God's written these things down. How many want a successful life? Amen. How many want a, a fruitful life? Amen. A successful life? A peaceful life? A restful life? Amen. Every commandment which I have commanded you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply. God wants you to be successful. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through. Right. I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. abundantly and go in and possess the land of which I have sworn to your fathers. You want joy, real joy, wonderful joy? Get into the word of God and believe and you shall remember, remember that the Lord your God, see you get into the word and he starts to remind you who he is. You start to realize afresh and who he is and what he's capable of doing and what he wants to do. And you shall remember that the Lord, your God, led you out of the way of these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to know that was in your heart whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to be hungry, and fed you with all the manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you known that man shall not live by what? Bread alone. Bread alone. But by what? Bread alone. By, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. We call it the Bible. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Get into the word. Wow. Job put it this way. 
I have not departed from your commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Wow. You see, God's a good cook. I said, God's a good cook. Amen. God knows how to put on a dinner. Amen. Yes, he does. Jeremiah put it this way. He said, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy of rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. 1 Peter 2, 3 says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. How many of you tasted that the Lord is gracious? Oh, yeah, amen. You know yeah. the Lord is gracious, Woo. the whole Lord is good. How many like second helping? Oh, yeah. How many like church potlucks? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Amen. Yes. See, I get accused at church potlucks of eating too much. I eat one plate because I need the food. The next two plates are just because I like the stuff. <laughs> Am I right, Michael Paul? He likes to eat like I do. We, we, we love good food. Yeah. And sometimes we eat it because we need it, and sometimes we eat it just because we want it. And sometimes we eat more than maybe we should. should. But unlike our necessary food, the Word of God, you can never eat too much. Amen. Wow. It's okay to get robust in the Word. Amen. God's a great cook. Once you start eating, you're not going to want to start. You're not going to want to stop. Wow. And it's life and death. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Wow. How many have ever been lost in the dark? Oh, yeah. Thy word is what? A lamp to my what? And a light. You want to know what to do next? You want to know how to get out of the darkness? Then you what? You throw the switch. You get into the Word. Philippians 1.19, 130 says, The entrance of your Word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Boy, I thank God for that verse. Oh, amen. So I fit right there. I'm just a country boy. I'm not a great reader either, Tommy. But man, do I love to study God's Word. I like to amen. dissect it. I like to know what I'm eating. Have you ever taken a real good bite of something and you just wash it around in your mouth? <laughs> yeah. Now Pastor's trying to make Savior. us hungry. Have you ever had a piece of good old homemade very berry pie, you know, where they had mix all the blackberries and the raspberries and all that all that stuff to, Oh man. Big scoop of ice. You put that in your mouth, my ear. And you kinda of mash it with your tongue and you just get, you just try to get every little uh, What are you doing? You're enjoying it. The prophet said, I muse over your word. I meditate. That's letting the scripture marinate in your mind and in your heart. Thy word have I hid. Thy word have I baked. Thy word have I cooked. Thy word have I simmered in my heart and in my mind. Your word's been simmering in me all week long. Now I get to preach it. Amen. It's been marinating for days now, so now I get to speak it. That word. And it lasts forever. Amen. Wow. Can I do just one more? 
And I can preach on the scripture forever. But it's a mighty influence. How many has ever been influenced by the Bible? By the word of God. Yeah. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Read it with me or say it with me. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to what? What's that mean to you? What's that mean to you? I'm not ashamed of the good news. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. My salvation is based upon his word. Yes, amen. How precious is his word. The power of God is just that for it is everyone, for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. <laughs> One of my favorite stories in the Old Testament, and I just love it, is the story of Ezekiel and the dry bones. This is what the Word of God can do. And it did it back then, and it can do it today, and it can do it here in Lucerne Valley. Ezekiel 37. He had seen the valley of bones, the valley of death. So I prophesied as he was instructed to prophesy. And so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling of the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews, everybody say flesh and flesh, muscle. Flesh, flesh and, muscle. <laughs> and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. So I, he said to me, prophesy to the, to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath. What does prophecy mean? It's not your ideas. Prophecy is not speaking what you conjure up in your mind. And some people teach that today, and it's just dead wrong. Run from that kind of doctrine like a scolded cat. Hmm. Prophecy comes from God. It is God's word spoken. Yes. And if you're prophesying on your own mouth, then just shut up. <laughs> Amen. Tell them I have an idea because that's what it is. That's not prophecy. Prophecy comes from God. It is thus saith the Lord. Amen. That's prophecy. Yes. So God tells Ezekiel, gives him instructions. That's prophecy. Yes. And he speaks to the four winds. That's prophecy. Thus saith the Lord. He's not doing it in his authority. He's not doing it from his intellect. He's not doing it from his wishes or his desires. He's expressing God's word yes. and the authority of Jehovah God itself. And he even tells the wind what to do. <laughs> Prophet, I sent a man and say to the breath, Thus saith the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, for they shall live. So I prophesied. So he obeyed the commandments. Everybody say, He obeyed. He obeyed. See, if you obey God's word, what's going to happen? If God's told you to do something, you obey it, what's going to happen? Be rewarded. It may not happen what you want to happen, but it's going to happen what he wants to happen. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet. Hmm. That'd be great to see the church of God stand up on his feet. Amen. An exceedingly great army. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're an exceedingly great army. All you need to do is what? Stand up. Get into the Word. Get into the Word. It lasts for what? Forever. Forever. Cal, come to your guitar if you would, please. It lasts for what? 
forever. It abides for what? Forever. It endures forever. Forever and ever. Everybody say, how? Lay. Yeah. Say, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God for his word. Father, again, we love you, give you praise, give you glory. We thank you for being so good, so powerful, so mighty. Thank you for your word. Give us a good sense to get into it like never before. Let us learn to meditate. Let us learn to eat it. Let us learn to love it like never before. Let us learn to digest it like never before. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stand with me. All hail King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. King of kings, Lord of lords, bright morning star. And throughout eternity, I'll sing your praises, and I'll reign with you throughout eternity. Deep breath now, come on. Oh. Yeah. 